today on The List. Get a sneak peek of a new show, learn how to impress your boss, and the uncomfortable truth about Top Gun Maverick. I was like, do not be embarrassed about that. Plus, how to use social media to help plan your next vacation. We have ended up in places that we may not have ever chosen for ourselves to visit. But up first, discover your legal rights if you buy a haunted house. It's your life, it's your list, and it starts right now. Hey everyone, I'm Jimmy Rhodes. And I'm Christina Guerrero, and happy Halloween! It is a season many people celebrate by decorating their houses with ghosts and goblins and a spider web or two. Well, you can clean up the legit spider webs, but what if your house really is haunted where the spirits are slamming doors and making strange noises 24-7, 365? Ooh, and what if you decide you want to sell that house? Does the market get a lot scarier. I see what you did there. How to sell a haunted house is our featured story at the top of the list. Some haunted houses are around long after October is over. So I invited over Don Alvarez, partner at Radix Law with an expertise in real estate law to teach me how to sell a home that may be uh, occupied. Things that go bump in the night, unexplained shadows, unexplained hot and cold spots. So first, is the house haunted? Well, are you seeing this? I do. Now the question is, has the door been hung properly? Is it level? So it could be a draft or it could be a poltergeist and we need to know. Third option, it could be a producer hiding in the closet. Buyers should check the seller's property disclosure statement for any potential pitfalls you may be mistaking for an otherworldly occupant. Next up, are ghosts good for business? A lot of realtors have stated that it's a good thing because it gives them notoriety, gives the property notoriety, which expands your market. According to a recent survey by Real Estate Witch, 58% of respondents said they'd consider buying a haunted home. So it may actually help you sell. But that brings us to number three, should I acknowledge the apparitions? And a rule of thumb that I give clients that are selling their house is that if you as a buyer want it disclosed, then you as a seller should disclose it. Certain states even require sellers to answer any question from a buyer fully and honestly. You just want to make sure your question isn't too specific. So I don't want to say, do the walls bleed? Or is there a poltergeist named Gladys? I just want to keep it broad. I want to say That's the right. house haunted. Yes. There's even a famous court case, the Ghostbusters ruling. Right. The Ghostbusters case, the seller was advertising, was telling people, did, did you hear that? No. Okay, yeah. Uh, what are you saying? Go, go, go ahead. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay, nothing. all right. And did not disclose it when the seller sold the house. Creepy little girl, tell me you see that. I do not. But the seller didn't disclose oh, that it was haunted, so when the buyer found out, he sued. And the courts basically decided that the buyer should have been told that the house was haunted. And that's three tips to sell your demonized dwelling. But if your haunting includes ghosts that are driving you batty, try cleansing your home. Learn how to get rid of ghosts at thelisttv.com. All right, but Don, what if I'm just crazy? Do you think you're crazy? Don? Selling your haunted house is on the top of the list. When many of us go on vacation, we try to pack in as much as possible and have every minute planned. But there's a different way to travel and learn to enjoy the journey. So pack your bags and open your mind to new adventures. Most of us know the saying, it's not the destination, it's the journey. But sometimes it's hard to actually put that into practice. I think that we get really caught up in the end goal and the destination that we lose sight of what's happening here and now. Colleen Carswell, family travel expert and CEO of Carswell Enterprise has tips on how spontaneity can add sizzle to any trip you'll want to start without a plan. Before we even put the car in reverse, we like to have our trips be fun and adventurous. So we start that with not really knowing where we're going until we're going. Once on the road, map out a few locations that are within two to four hours of your home. It's just such a freeing experience to be able just to let go to go with the flow and just let things unfold organically and naturally. If that gives you anxiety, why not let your friends and family make the decision? We do that by putting a poll in our Instagram stories where they get to vote um, on each next destination. 
Once a decision is made, plan the rest of the trip using the Learn Checklist. We have L, which is local. So whether that's going to be exploring the local flavor, local heritage or history, exploring a local landmark. E is for entertainment. And that could be anything from a sporting event to seeing a Broadway show, to going to an amusement park or zoo or aquarium. A stands for an act of kindness. We believe passionately that wherever we go, we should be spreading ripples of joy and happiness to others. She says the acts don't have to be extravagant. It can be anything from making an effort to find people who are trying to take pictures, selfies of themselves, to offering to take pictures for them. Or it could be helping the housekeepers out at the hotel by stripping the beds and gathering up all the trash. R is for recreation and relaxation. Because we get to this point where we go on a vacation and we're just go, go, go. And then we get back from the vacation and you need a vacation from your vacation. So it's important to incorporate mindfully having that rest component. And N is for nature. That could be taking a hike, going bird watching, or visiting a national park or botanical garden. Along the way, let tech make it easy. There are so many apps and resources and tools out there that you have in the palm of your hand. Two of her favorite trip planning tools are the Road Trippers app and CitiesNear.com. Where all we have to do is pop in our location, how many hours we want to drive, and then it just spits out all the different locations that we could visit. Hitting the open road and living for the moment. Growing up isn't easy for anyone, but for Josh Sundquist, it was just one challenge after another. And on a new series on Apple TV called Best Foot Forward is all about the difficulties he faced. Jackie Denker talked to him about the life lessons he's learned along the way. How much of the series is real, real? I think every episode has a piece of my life that's real in it. The Apple TV series Best Foot Forward is based on the life of the show's executive producer, Josh Sundquist, former Paralympian skier turned comedian who lost his leg to cancer at nine years old. The show follows young Josh as he navigates life going from homeschool to public school with a prosthetic leg. He plays soccer. He's very enthusiastic, right? He reads a lot of self-help books. And he has one leg. And he has one leg. Uh, guys, listen. I want to make friends because they like me, not because they feel bad for me. And we caught up with Josh to learn some life lessons about overcoming hardships. First, he talks the importance of acceptance. There's sort of like two kinds of obstacles in life. There's the kind that you can sort of push through or overcome. There's also the kind that ultimately you have to accept and surrender to and in that sense transcend. And for Josh? I had cancer, right? I have one leg. Those aren't things I can like change or like overcome. They're just part of me. They are my reality. And in that sense, I have to find a way and, and everyone has to find a way, I think, when faced with something like that to accept like, this is real. This is happening. How am I going to move forward? What am I going to do with my life in this situation? Which brings us to always look ahead and strive for a goal. I've always looked for things that I'm passionate about or I'm excited about. He says he turns challenges into motivation. For example, going to the Paralympics, writing the book, making this series, whatever. And, and so to me, it's always about having a finish line in the future that I'm, uh, I'm excited to reach for. And I think that's what always uh, motivates me personally. Josh, you've been homeschooled your whole life. So public school is going to be challenging. Here we go. Finally, even though things get hard, there's always room for humor. My leg was fine. This was actually uh, an elective weight loss surgery. I find humor to be a great coping mechanism. You can't catch me on the gingerbread man. <gasps> Somebody grab me a doctor. Even when things in life aren't necessarily funny. There is a kernel of laughter that you can find within it. And as a comedian and as an internet creator and, and in this show, you know, it's like finding that that bit of comedy is what helps me cope and hopefully also entertains other people. Awesome. We're learning how to tackle life and its obstacles. Oh, Still to come on the list, easy ways to impress your boss. Bring the attitude that you want reciprocated. Plus, innovative tech gifts to grab early. Holofill Cardboard is a unique patent pending 3D holographic display. And here we go in three. One. What the actors in Top Gun Maverick had to do besides act. Our actors went through three months of grueling training. Next on the list. YouTube slipping into this break to ask you to please subscribe and turn on notifications. And that might seem like a lot, but guys, it's not like I'm asking you to pick me up at the airport or something. What's in it for you? Well, you will never miss one minute of the list. Okay, back to the show.
Hey guys, welcome back. All right, when your manager moves on, meeting their replacement can be a nerve-wracking experience. So true. The person who trained you is gone, and someone with limited knowledge of your company and of your value is about to be in charge of your work life. Oh boy, but before you start sending out resumes, let's put things in a positive light and build a great relationship with your new boss. If you stay in a job long enough, you might see management come and go, which can be frustrating. Because each boss is individual, and that's part of what it takes to get to develop a good relationship with them. So if you have a new boss, Scott Mautz, author of Leading from the Middle, shares his tips on how to foster this new relationship. For starters, schedule an intro meeting. You have to have three very specific goals in mind. Scott recommends to take initiative with an email. You indicate, hey, I'm looking forward to getting to know you more in the future. This sends a message that you're not going to get in their face and try to be their bestie right away. You haven't established trust yet. Then let them know what you'd like to discuss in your meeting. First and foremost, expectations. Right out of the gate, hey boss, what's the difference between good and great? What measures and metrics are most important to you? Let's assume, boss, that I get great results. What behaviors do you want to see me engaging in to get those results? And ask how they'd like to receive information and updates. Do you like to listen to information or read it? How often do you like to receive emails? What kind of information is important for you? Once you get the meeting, make a great first impression. For that first meeting, you got to be on time. You got to be prepared. You got to show up as the friendliest version of yourself. Sounds simple. So many people don't do all three of those things. Then you have to be mindful of your visual and verbal cues. Visually, you want to use what scientists call the Duchenne smile. This is where you smile from the corners of your mouth, bring your cheeks up, and your eyes crinkle a little. So it comes across as a very genuine smile, not a plastic smile. That can really help us connect up front. During the meeting, he says to remember to be interested, not interesting. Meaning, a lot of people think, my job is to go in and wow my boss, show them what I know. Instead, try to actively listen. You want to show that you're processing that, you're interested in their answers, and that you're going to take action on that. Finally, avoid tripping into a toxic relationship. Relationships between boss and subordinate go toxic very quickly when you as the employee forget this. You forget that I actually need my boss and he or she needs me. I actually forget that he's imperfect or she's imperfect just like I am. Forgetting this can lead to thoughts of disengagement or resentment that can subtly sabotage that relationship. When the employee really starts acting bitter towards the boss, and then they're surprised when the boss elevates their level of bitterness back and then it just goes down. He says bring the positivity. Somebody has to start with a positive attitude you may as well bring the attitude that you want reciprocated. Leveling up the meet and greet with a new boss. It can be hard to stay up to date with the ever growing, forever changing tech space, but luckily our crack team of producers here at The List is on the case. Here are three innovative gadgets that might make your life easier and that you can buy without breaking the bank. Coming in at number one, Holofill Cardboard. Holofill Cardboard is a unique patent-pending 3D holographic display using your mobile phone to create cool holographic visual experiences. If you're bored staring at your mobile screens and you want to spice up your visual world, this might be the gadget for you. The applications are in areas such as interactive 3D gaming, improving social engagement, and interactive training with an incredible user engagement. Compatible with both Apple and Android, this gadget can be yours for about $80. You can create content for it using our software apps or using more advanced softwares. For more information, visit holofill.com. At number two, Unpluck. With Unpluck, distracting apps of your choice are blocked. If smartphones have taken over your life, this could be a game changer. You're in control of when to use those distracting apps, so you decide what to spend your time and attention on. But this doesn't mean giving up on social media. By simply tapping the unplugged tag on the back of your phone, you can resume access. Also, with schedules, you decide which apps are blocked during what day and time of the week. You can spend $60 on a yearly subscription or wait for special deals. For more information, visit unplugged.com and that's with a Q, not a C or a K, because tech people just love to misspell their names. 
In fact, the third item on our list also has a funky spelling, lap lock, but without the C. With lap lock, you can truly secure your devices at any time in any location. With more than 1,600 laptops stolen every day, this device focuses on much needed gadget security. The manufacturer says LapLock is strong, lightweight, and easy to use. With the touch of the button, your device is secure. To release the lock, just use the keypad to enter your three or four digit pin. You're then unlocked, pull the bottom piece down, arm comes out of the lap lock. You're all set, easy on, easy off. It sells for $75. For more details, visit laplock.com. Those were three affordable innovations that you might want to check out and coming up, behind the scenes of the biggest blockbuster of the year thus far, Top Gun Maverick. Stay with us. You want the most out of life, and thelisttv.com is your one place to find it all. From money-saving hacks to great family vacations to mouth-watering recipes and the latest lifestyle trends. It's your life, it's your list, and it's on thelisttv.com. We're back, and today on The Watch List, we're talking about the highest grossing movie of this year by far, Top Gun Maverick. Hattie D. Jamal talked to the stars to find out some things even people who've watched it over and over again don't know about it. Here we go. In three, two, one. Top Gun Maverick has made nearly $1.5 billion worldwide. Now that it's flying from theaters to digital, Blu-ray and DVD, the stars are revealing some behind the scenes secrets. No turning back now. Come on. First, in honor of football season, they summed up how they prepared for their roles like this. It feels like we did off season training in regards to learning how to take G-forces at that high level. The aviation sequences had to be real. So our actors went through three months of grueling training. We played in the season, we went to the playoffs, and then we finished the season undefeated. Well, actually, no, defeated, because Tarzan, said you were a loss. Like, you, you passed out on that jet, so that, that's, that counts as a loss in the jerk. I don't know. No, that does not count as like, a loss. We lost that. That's a week 13 loss. I had to continuously do this one pop-up maneuver, and we did it like 15 times in order to get the tape. And did I pass out? Hell no. Oh, okay. Everything was real. So, of course, you're going to have real life moments and real life people throwing up, throwing out their guts, which can also be considered a loss. Not somebody <laughs> scoring a touchdown on you doesn't mean you lost the game. <laughs> During flight training, they would be embarrassed about puking. <sighs> I was like, do not be embarrassed about that. There was a lot more to worry about in the air besides whether or not they felt sick. The actors also had to learn how to run the cameras because when they're up in the jet, they have to direct themselves, essentially. Okay, I'm rolling. I had to really teach them cinematography and the lighting so that they understood what's going to look good on camera. When you're in high-stress situations, you already lose lines, lose everything. But yeah. just imagine having to turn the camera on, make sure the vibe's right, make sure the sun is in the right position. Try to stay with me. Keep in mind, there's no monitor. So there's a camera here, a camera sitting here, and there's another jet flying alongside you. And you have to be like, okay, wait, can we go up a little bit? Can we go down? Hold on, slow it down. Here we go, all right. What the hell kind of mission is this? One reason they were convinced they could do such difficult things to make this movie, Tom Cruise. The rigorous training that we went through that Tom set up was incredible. We would not have been able to do it if he did not set that program yeah. up for us. Push beyond your limits have somebody who says this is what I want to do this is what I want to accomplish and they actually do it you see all the benefits you're like wow I can do anything it's, it's, it's movie cool. magic but it's not magic it's hard work yeah hard work dedication learning that like made anything conceivable all the training 100% prepared us today I feel like a pilot behind the scenes of Top Gun Maverick on the watch list you know, Jimmy, I think that Tom Cruise has a future in this business. Yeah, we'll see, maybe. And I'll bet a lot of trick-or-treaters this year dressed as Maverick this Halloween. That's right, my little familia included. True. We're gonna be Maverick for Halloween. Hey, in fact, when we come back, we are looking at pop culture's influence on costumes. Last on our list is next.
Welcome back. It's time for what's last on our list. And in honor of Halloween, how about this from Variety, the best pop culture Halloween costumes for 2022. All right, from the TV side, as you'd expect, House of the Dragon is huge. The robes, the wigs, the weapons, there's just a lot to dig your teeth into. Couples are even teaming up to dress as the Valyrian wedding. Another <laughs> series that has big costumes and dedicated fans, what we do in the shadows. And of course, there's the Disney Plus hit, Miss Marvel. What about some movies? Okay. Uh, Baz Luhrmann's Elvis has made the King of Rock and Roll a relevant costume once again. And there is a couple's uh, movie reference too. Barbie and Ken. Yes, well pop culture is always an easy go-to mm -hmm. for Halloween costumes. My little familia, for instance, we've done Ghostbusters, Spider-Man, Harry Potter. And in fact, you and I have both worn pop culture influenced costumes for the list. Yeah, you were absolutely terrifying as Pennywise from yeah. Stephen King's It and I Hate Clowns. Yeah, and you were a fetching 11 from Stranger <laughs> Things when that first hit. On a scale of one to 10, I was an 11. You, you were definitely an 11. Well, whatever you dressed as or whether you wore a costume or not, we hope you've had a wonderful Halloween. Or for non-participants, a wonderful Monday. Yes, and Monday can be terrifying. Yeah, can anyway, helps. right? And that's what's last on our list. Thank you. YouTube, thanks for watching this Halloween edition of The List. Even if you're not watching on Halloween, we hope it was a treat. <laughs> and here's a trick. If you subscribe, you'll never miss The List. See what I did there? We'd love it if you could also give us a like and leave a comment down below. And if you're looking for a safe space to come down off that sugar high, well, how about some more episodes of The List? Here you go. Just hydrate, put down that Kit Kat bar, and click away.